Okay, last time we did talk about these guys, uh, the cutaneous lot of migrants uh, uh, of the, what is the name of the organism if you encounter, if you encounter a multiple choice uh, exam uh, and say uh, Ancelostoma uh, du Denali cause cutaneous lot of migrants, true or false? False. Okay, these are um, these are caused by the dog hookworm uh, and Celastoma canina. Okay, uh, so cutaneous phlegmomites. I think that, that the hookworm we talked about the last time. We're done. Is that right? Yeah. We gotta go to the next worm. The next worm is Trichinella spiralis. We did discuss them, but uh, we didn't have the lecture on them. So Trichinella spiralis is the name of the. There are several. I should have wrote them all. Trichinosis uh, is one of the name of the disease, but they're all like similar to this, uh, called trichinosis, uh, the name of the disease, um, caused by the organism trichinella spiralis. Uh, usually we get them, we human get it by eating uncooked meat, and they, are, they love, these parasites love uh, skeletal muscle. They usually, not the adult, juvenile stages, would love to go to the skeletal muscles. The adult of these parasites, adult of these parasites, they are living in the intestine and they put out these um, larval stages, eventually the larval stages go to the skeletal muscle and form the nurse cell, which I will show you. Yes, sir? Uh, for uncooked meat, is it beef, swine, or is it just all meat? All meat. All meat, okay. There, I'll show you a life cycle. People who go like to go to the wild and hunt bear, and they uh, eat them raw on the spot. They okay. get them. And I'll show you the life cycle. <laughs> the sylvatic life cycle and uh, domestic life cycle. I already mentioned sylvatic life cycle in the past, what the definition of sylvatic life cycle is. Uncooked meat. So, uh, muscle aches, people who have them, they have muscle aches. Uh, so, uh, they have some, again, in heavy infection, eventually end up in person's death. Uh, but in low infection, you might have a few uh, nurse cell here and there, uh, and you kill the adult by medication. Uh, so there is no more nurse cell uh, being uh, made, and eventually they, they have a life expectancy too. They will die. The nurse cells will die. Larva insists in skeletal muscles, as I said, and it's called nurse cell. I'll show you a picture of nurse cell in a minute. Almost the same epidemiology as Toxoplasm gondii. Okay, Toxoplasma gondii, what I mean by epidemiology of it, we get it from eating, most human get it from eating raw meat. Okay, same as these guys. We get them by eating raw meat. And how the farm animals, most likely pork, get it because pork is being fed garbage and rodents, they usually in their uh, pen, they like to uh, grab rodents and eat them and rodents have trichinella and that's how the life cycle goes on. And I'll show you some pictures. Uh, the one that I got from CDC, uh, Larry helped me to put it up there uh, this morning. So it will make sense. Here we go, right here. Okay, so this is, <coughs> this is the, this is called the domestic uh, life cycle that the pigs in the farm usually eat rodents and rodents are all over in the farm. And that's how it happens in the pig, uh, pigs. And then if we human ingest it, eat pork, what happens, and uh, we don't cook it well, very well. Again, there are studies, I said there are some studies, two or uh, two studies that I knew of, it doesn't matter how you cook it, it will not kill it. It will not kick, kill the uh, nurse cell. I hope, where are you? Oh, I don't have a picture of nurse cell? Who must be kidding me? I thought I did. No, I guess I don't. Sorry, I will put it up for next year, I guess. <laughs> Okay, right here is a nurse cell in skeletal muscle, and the nurse cell around it, they form calcium carbonate, and that's why it's hard to kill. Okay, um, so we human ingest it, then uh, these come out of nurse cell and become L4, adult, and the adult find their way to the small intestine. So male and female of this worm, the adult, live in the small intestine, do not harm us. Okay? So 
when, when a person is diagnosed with this parasite, they go, uh, doctors will go kill the adult. They give medication to kill the yolk, but the medication will not kill the nurse cells, <coughs> which are in the skeletal muscle. Okay, so that, that, that stops right there, production of more and more of the nerve cells in the skeletal muscle. What happens usually, these guys like skeletal muscle and even they prefer more the diaphragm. So in heavy infection, what will happen, the diaphragm cannot go up and down, as a result the person will suffocate and die because of lack of oxygen. Okay, diaphragm is very important in your respiration. Uh, so that's one way we get it from domestic life cycle. The other one is sylvatic life cycle when the birds, we just mentioned, uh, eat ho hogs, the, um, the wild pigs, and then that, or rodents, and that life cycle goes on in the wild. And then sometimes we eat hogs or we eat bear, and when we don't cook the meat, same thing happens. Same thing. <coughs> yes, and Patrick, you had a question like that. Uh, so are we just intermediate hosts for them, or is there a dependent host? No, th this is pretty much, I would call it a direct life cycle. The other direct life cycles we had was through feces, okay? This one, I would say, is a direct life see, I guess in biology there was black and white. There's always in gray area in biology. But you do need, if another person wants, or another animal, bears, if we eat as a healthy bear, let's say, eat human, become infected. Okay, they will become infected. So it's a direct life cycle in a sense that there is no intermediate, both. This human has both adult and the juvenile. Am I making some sense? The bird has both adult and juvenile. So as a result, I would call this as a direct life cycle. It's not involved with feces. It's involved with meat. Larry. Uh, the nerve cells in the skeletal muscle, uh, how prevalent are they in infection? How big are they? Like, would you be able to see it? Microscopic. You do have slide on them. You have a slide of them. They're very small. They're microscopic. Very small. Uh-huh. So you said that since they can be found in any kind of raw meat, they can be found in this meat. So this can be found anywhere in the world? Of course. Okay. It's cosmopolitan. Yes, this is a parasite that is cosmopolitan. Everywhere in the world is found, including US of A. Our sterile society, <laughs> bless, it. bless it, yes. Our sterile society has it. Some people have it in US, some people get it. Again, but you know, the technology and you know, diagnosis is immediate in the United States. Uh, other countries, the people have a little bit of muscle ache, they go to work and come back from work and pay raw meat, pork, I should say. Uh, it's unfortunate, but it happens, yes. Okay, so uh, as I said, yes, please. Sorry, you said the adults are found. When does it become harmful to the host? Because you said the adults can be both be found there. Yeah, in the intestine. In the intestine. See? But when male and female is found in the intestine, like just, they by, come, uh, just by numbers, they uh, they start they harm their hosts. Right, the adult get together and they make uh, they release larva stages. They get together larva stages. You don't need too many of them. Okay. You just need a couple, two, three, four, five, in the intestine, and then they put them out. They put out the larva stages. And uh, of course, they cause damage. That's how they cause damage. Oh. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, Larry. Uh, you said cooking wouldn't uh, doesn't kill it. Yeah. Would a process like pickling or dehydration do anything? No. Uh, freezing sometimes. Again, when I say cooking does not kill it, people all over the world are watching this, and they're going to shoot me and say, "No, I mean cooking. Uh, cooking will kill it." Uh, there are a few studies that they said that cooking does not kill it. There are many studies, there are many more studies that say yes, killing, uh, cooking will kill it. Okay, so um, this is probably the only parasite we are studying in here. It's controversy, what temperature, what kills them or not kill them. Now, all other parasites we studied in here, cooking will kill. This is the one that uh, some people say no, it will not. So, not, not too many. Yes, did they answer you? 
Yes. Um, now you said that it can be killed by medication. Um, the adult. The adult. The adult are killed by medication. The juvenile, the uh, L1, L2, L3 are not. They cannot be killed. Okay? Okay. Listen. Uh, again, a few things you should know. Germany, uh, I say Germany because that one I know. England and France, I'm not sure possibly they're like that. They do not buy United States pork because of this. In the United States, they take pigs from farms, they take the blood, and they check them for antibody. We studied that. You all know what antibody is. You have this parasite, you have the antibody. In Germany, what they do, every pig that goes through slaughter, they check the diaphragm. They put them on a microscope, just like the slime you have, they don't stain them. They just put them on a microscope, they put it, the, the piece of diaphragm on the slide, on the microscope, look at it. If it is clear, the pig goes to the market. But if it does not, then uh, they condemn the whole herd. In the United States, if the antibody is positive, comes out positive, and then they can they will run a test again, they condemn the whole herd. Sometimes these positive tests are actually negative. Serology is magic. Okay? But most of the time it tells you the truth. That's why anytime you have a serological test, uh, they ask you to do it again. But pregnancy test, you do it once, you're not necessarily pregnant, you do it again. Okay, you must do it again. Uh, same as anything else. If God forbid you go to a doctor, you check yourself for HIV, uh, and it comes out positive, go back again. Maybe the first time was a negative. It happens in serology all the time. So go back again and check yourself two, maybe three times until all three, four times it comes out positive. Okay, the next one. I'm done. Uh, let's go to uh, pinworm uh, Enterobias famiglaris. <coughs> This parasite is uh, the only, uh, the first one that you're studying, there is one more. The life cycle of this parasite is completed, the whole entire life cycle of this parasite is completed inside of their host. Male and female get together, release the egg. The egg in the uh, large intestine, in the colon, in the anus area becomes L1. L2, L3, L4, adult. Adult goes back up into the intestine, copulate. So the whole life cycle can, it does not have to leave the host. But, but they do. When a person defecates, the feces goes out, and the feces out in the environment can infect another person, so on and so forth. Okay, so there is both. They do leave their host, the egg, leave their host, but uh, the life cycle can still be completed entirely in the host as well. It happens both. It's not like either or. Both will happen constantly. Pinworm. Common name is the pinworm. And you, you will have slide of it. You have the eggs of them, uh, of the pinworms. And you have the uh, adult female or male, either one, of the pinworm. What else is it? They, don't, they cause actually no problem. I took that young lady. Uh, to a doctor, I said, I want the medication, ben I think it was benzimetazole, she, he gave me one pill. I want it to be treated for pain one. Yeah, yeah. As I said, 100% of children in the United States have it, based on some studies. Somebody said, no, not in my county. We are more most sterile population in the world. Yeah, uh, but again, there are some studies. Uh, let me large intestine, of course, as I said, uh, haplodiploidy, get rid of that one. That's not true anymore uh, with this one. So cross it off, please, in your notes. I thought I did take it off, but I guess not. I don't know. Uh, okay, male and fe uh, male usually die after copulation. Same as female, they usually die after copulation because, does anybody want to take a wild guess why they die? It's too strenuous. Very good. Make room for their offspring because the offspring are going to be in this uh, large intestine. Am I making some sense? So they die to have room and also food resources uh, for the offspring as well. Um, a female die after ovulation. Uh, they both die. A retro infection usually in cases of constipation. What happens? Retro infection, as I was saying, that 
the parasite uh, complete its life cycle. That's called retroinfection. Okay, completes its life cycle inside of the large intestine. And that is in case of the person uh, usually, uh, you know, in this country, we are human adults. If we get it, our immune system will overcome it, will get rid of it. But other countries, since they have two or three or four parasites, um, usually they have pinworm too, okay, because the immune system is not that strong to get rid of it. But anyhow, uh, retroinfection is when the person is constipated. So uh, here it is. The eggs, if you look at the eggs, eggs of all of the pinworm of all of the species, from snake, from any animal that they brought to the lab, and I'll look at the pinworm, it looks like this. One side is flat, and the other side is curved. And that's how your slides are. So that is a clear indication it's a pinworm. I didn't have to search it, look at it anymore, measure it, measure the distance anymore. I saw one side is flat and the other side is cut. Even a human pinworm is like that. All, all animals' pinworm is like that. And what they call a pinworm, the posterior end of the animal, the tail end of the animal, not the head. I do not have the head picture. The posterior end of the animal is very narrow, like this. So they call it pinworm. That's the common name. And this is a female. This is all eggs. And one of the highlights of my life, I saw a pinworm on the dissecting scope, which was putting out eggs. You know, everybody has a highlight of their life. They're famous, they got a signature from the famous basketball player, or they shook a hand with the president. The highlight of my life was, was looking on the microscope, the and I see the pinworm put out eggs. <laughs> huh? What is that? Am your children being born? Not my children, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was in Tennessee on the dissecting scope. I don't know how it, And just by coincidence, I went in there and I saw, wow. I did not call other people. I said, do you guys see this? I said, yeah, you put it there already. I said, well, how come you guys didn't tell me? Was, maybe because I found it by myself. I was excited. But then I told everybody else in the lab. And they said, yeah, you put it there. Me? You don't want to tell me? <laughs> okay, uh, so pinworm, there are a few studies, they went to the movie theaters, uh, screens on the, on the, in old days, in movie theaters, they had curtains on the sides for decoration. They took a swab and they found pinworm eggs in there. How did they got in movie theaters, God knows, but on the chairs, on the, many different places, they found the eggs of pinworm. Again, thank God they do not harm us. Uh, greatly, but they are fine. Uh, Trichuris, Trichuris is the whipworm, and uh, in the lab, uh, you do have, on two by twos, you have the egg zone, the egg of uh, whipworm. Uh, usually found in Appalachian Mountains, it's found all over the world, it's just not only in the United States, in Appalachian Mountains, it's again cosmopolitan, all over the world, and cause little harm uh, if numbers are low, something we discussed in the past. And uh, they have operculated eggs. And I sh uh, they have, the eggs have two operculum on both sides. In the past, you have seen operculated eggs like uh, Cullinarchus sinensis, like uh, Fasciola hepatica. Um, those are the eggs have operculum, and these guys' eggs have operculum as well, but they have on both ends. Of course, the L1 comes out from one of the ends. Here is the egg, as I said, it's operculated right here, right there, operculated eggs. And then, this is the whipworm because look at this thick portion of the animal. And then it has, eventually, it's a long worm. And eventually, at the end, it becomes um, a very narrow. What happens, the Russian scientist who first discovered this, he said, okay, it's a common sense. I, if I was discovered this parasite for the first time, I would say, I would say that this end has the mouth, common sense. This end has the mouth, and the thin end at the end, let's say that's it, that has the anus. But after further research and review and so on and so forth, they found out, no, the mouth is on this end, and the anus is on the other end, is on the thicker end, on the handle of the whip. Okay, so that was another interesting thing uh, that you learned in parasitology. Whipworm, again, really did not cause much problem. However, if the numbers are great, chemia, if the numbers of whip, uh, whipworms are a lot, they can cause prolapse rectum. 
It's called prolapse rectum. Did I write it anywhere? Yeah. You know, you just started rolling an idea and that's not clear. <laughs> so <clears throat> the numbers are a lot, and you can see a few, <coughs> a few whipworm right here. So uh, in this case, in this patient, what happened uh, after they treated, they killed the worms, then over a period of time, little by little, by medication, and little of, of manipulation, I'm not sure surgery, uh, they were able to pat, put back the rectum into the patient, and uh, that person went uh, to be normal, eventually. But it can happen. Okay, let's go to filarial worms. I hope I'm waking up. You don't need, for this class, you don't need coffee. You're just gonna see prolapsed rectum. <laughs> you wake up. No, Zoo, is that right? You don't need coffee for this class. Okay, flarial worms. Flarial worms, pretty much, they are called blood born. Blood born, like malaria is a blood born. They are called blood worm nematode. Okay. Malaria, uh, leishmania, you all know what I'm talking about. They are found in the blood. They're not in the intestine. These guys are not in the intestine, usually. Uh, but anyhow. Uh, with the first one, we only mentioned two or three because of time. In parasitology class, they mentioned four or five, six, the most important ones. But anyhow, we mentioned two or three that you. Uh, the first one is Muscheraria bancrofti. Uh, Dr. Brian Croft and I work on it, so they call it Mushuria by Croft. It causes elephantiasis. Elephantiasis is caused by edema, accumulation of fluid in the tissues. So one of the extremities, arms, legs, or scrotum, have accumulation of fluid in there and cause elephantiasis, okay? Left in lymphatic system. The uh, parasite, uh, the male and female, uh, live in the lymphatic system. And that's why they cause edema. And uh, microfilaria is L1, and the female release them, so it's viviparous. They are viviparous animals, like uh, Trichinella or spiralis. They're viviparous. All of, all of filarial worms are viviparous. They release juvenile, L1. And then uh, mosquito transmit them. Uh, so a mosquito comes from, uh, take a blood meal from one person uh, with a microfilaria and take the microfilaria L3 and to another person and in another person L3 becomes L4 adult. Okay, so. The other one is onchocerciasis, the name of the disease or river blindness. Scientific name is called onchocerciasis, uh, and the name of the uh, uh, disease is called, uh, common name for the disease is called river blindness. Uh, transmitted by cymelium, by black fly. It's supposed to say black fly. And uh, the name of the organism is onchocercovalvulus. Onchocercovalvulus, again, as I said, they say there is a bacteria in there that causes blindness. That's this type of blindness is irreversible. When a person becomes blind, they blind forever. Okay, so it's a, we have different types of blindness. Some of them are reversible, some of them are irreversible. This one is irreversible blindness. Okay, so uh, again, as I said before, uh, Cymelium lives on running water. So they, when the fly wants to feed, they go to the banks of the river and they take blood meal from people who are on the banks of the river and they transmit it from one person to the next person to the next person. So the, in this case, this is indirect life cycle. You do have a uh, biological vector, which is the fly. Okay, so you do have biological vector. In this case, uh, we should already bankrupt that. The biological vector is uh, mosquito. Uh, Diaphilaria emetis. Uh, dog heartworm, it can be found in cats as well. Both dogs and cats are more common in dogs. You see them in cats as well. Um, but the common name is dog heartworm. Here they are, they're long, they're kind of long. You look at this uh, yeah, for your own pleasure and leisure. Look at this later on. Uh, these are actual heart and actual uh, worms in there. <clears throat> so the, the male and female 
one of them usually, <coughs> one male, one female, resides in the heart, and they put out the microfluoria into the blood, just like the rest of filarial worms. Just like the rest of filarial worms, they put the microfluoria into the heart. Dark heart. Okay. Uh, here is elephantiasis, severe case of elephantiasis. These are, again, these are treatable, uh, but takes time. And you know, you might say, why this patient? Why? He did not or she did not go to a doctor. Well, think about it. This patient is probably 100 miles walking, not driving. Walk his village or her village is 100 miles away from the first clinic that he can go. He has to take off from work. He has to take off from family. Walk 100 miles. So he let it become that big. He has no other choice. He has to move on in his life. Okay. It's not like us, you know, we get on the car and drive down the hammer lane, we are in a clinic. It's not like that. Same as this person. He just had no other choice. In this case, or the one that I showed you, and the other one, uh, they, the parasitologist went to the village with a land cruiser, and then they took a picture first, then they put him in land cruiser and took him back to the medical facility with medication, surgery, and he was back to normal, but he lost both of his testes and uh, he started working back in his village again. Again, the mosquito is the culprit. Mosquito caused this problem. We can control the mosquito in those remote area, then uh, sure, we cure a lot of people. Again, if you look at your, um, uh, I'd like to take a point off, uh, a minute off here. We are done with all of those six diseases that World Health Organization mentioned. Filarial is one of them. Malaria, Leishmaniasis, filarial worms, is that right? The other two, Schistosomiasis, and what was the other one? Leprosy. Huh? Leprosy, Leprosy yeah. So there are six of them. Out of those six that the world has problem with it, out of those six, five of them are parasites that you're studying in this class. Medical schools do not cover them. In the United States, of course. Other, other parts of the world, they cover them, but not in the United States. OK, uh, sign of medicine, we like to say that. We parasitologists say uh, the world turns around parasites. That's what we claim. Is that right? <laughs> so Edward is laughing. Yeah, Edward, you, wait, let's wait you what you become. If you become a, a race car driver and say the world is really revolving around you know, race cars. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Whatever you become, you say the world is revolving. It's good. It's good to say that because it means you love your profession. You love your job. So what happens? The sign of medicine, the stick, that's a stick. And these are two, uh, I would say they are drunculus medinensis, but you read the literature sometimes, a lot of times it is serpents, uh, snakes. They use snakes for the venom of snakes to treat people. But I say no. It's Jocunculus medinensis. What is the story of Palm? That's that. But again, we are having fun. Is that right, Eric? That's what you happens when you come to the class one time. You have fun. <laughs> You're having fun. Okay. Jocunculus medinensis. The common name for this uh, parasite is guinea worm. Okay. Uh, intermediate host is a copepod. Copepod. We haven't studied that. Uh, you studied it. It's a crustacean. It's a small, very small, and people drink it. People drink this copepod from water, the water that has been contaminated, has not been uh, uh, filtered, sanitized. So when they drink it, we human are the final host. And what happens, uh, contaminated drinking water, and not this is not a filarial worm, guys. <clears throat> I said that, I put it in the PowerPoint, then you come and say, oh, Amir, I thought it was a filarial worm. No, this is not a filarial worm. And what happens when people go to the body of water right here, either to drink the water, or they expose themselves, the hands, the legs, into that water, what happens? The female comes out. The female, this is a female, is coming out to release the egg. So the egg goes into the copepod, the crustacean, in that body of water, and then it's waiting until somebody else comes and drink the water. When they drink the water, 
the larva comes out, the egg became larva, and larva comes out of the copepod, becomes L1, L2, L3, or L4, and then adult, and the adult lives in the intestine. How do they know we are going to the body of water and expose ourselves to water? They know that the female comes out to lay eggs into the body of water. Am I making some sense? So what happened in old days, people went to medicine man, and medicine man put a stick, this is a stick. They put a stick around the worm, and they rolled out the worm, out of the person, either hands or legs. Okay, oh, and, and that's why they say sign of medicine, sign of medicine is, if you would, right here. That's the sign of medicine, the stick, and trochanculus medicinensis, of course. Parasitologists say that. Okay, and here is another one. The person is going to the body of water. Um, sometimes it happens, it does happen. If you become a doctor someday, uh, when you try to take this out, this breaks that uh, the fluid inside of the animal can kill the person. Uh, uh, prophylactic shock, they call it prophylactic shock. So this can kill the person. You have to be very careful when you're taking it out slowly, very slowly, so the worm does not break. If the worm breaks, then possible that the person will die. They brought a nine-year-old girl to the United States from Africa, and they found this worm in her, and then what happened, they went in there by surgery, they removed it by surgery. You can do that too, you have technology here, but in other countries, they don't have surgery room. The best thing is to take it out by uh, by, a, uh, by a stick. Yes. Africa mainly. Africa, Asia, both found in uh, Middle East parts of Middle East. Yes. Africa and Asia. Drucanculus medinensis. Oh, here we go. Hey, I had it in here. Uh, word schistosomiasis, malaria. Filariasis, we only studied two or three of them. There are more. Loa, loa is another one. Another filarial one, which is not healthy. Um, Trypanosomiasis, again, Lishmaniasis, and lepros. World Health Organization. Um, here is a chart. I got it from that parasitology textbook. I don't know how much of it is true, or how much of it is recent, and so on and so forth. These are infections, and these are death per year. Um, again, uh, I don't know. Um, just you don't have to know anything about it. Just you know that uh, people around the world are dying of uh, these diseases. Again, uh, Western countries that have uh, a lot of money and power, uh, they are not tackling these. Right? Because they do not have problem with it. They got rid of them mostly, uh, again, I'm calling Western countries, Australia, uh, France, England, Germany, United States. They got rid of them because they had the technology, they had the power, they have the money, they have everything to get rid of them. Malaria was in the United States until 1930s. They got rid of them. They sprayed everywhere, they put screens, they knew what to do, they did it. But the government was not corrupt. United States and other Western countries are giving money to the countries who have malaria. But the politicians, I guess, their pockets have holes. I, I, I don't know how they are listen to the NPR. Uh, there is no real remedy. How, unless the United States or these countries, they go in there, which not too many people, and they get rid of them themselves. They spray, but again, the war in those countries are a big problem. They're not safe. Those, you know, United Nations employees are not safe, so they rather to give the money to those countries and they get rid of them. But again, it's a cycle, it's a vicious cycle that other countries cannot get rid of. But anyhow, uh, here is a list. Enjoy it. If you come up with a solution, let us know. Don't let me know. I cannot do anything. Let uh, Obama know. President Obama, or whatever, whoever. But anyway, as long as you know the problem. Phylum rotifera. Okay. Um, phylum rotifera, quickly, let's talk about these two other phylum, and then we stop. 
uh, when we go to uh, nematodes, we stop at nematodes. Rotifera, uh, the organism you have in the lab is philodendron. You have a slide of it, microscopic, very small. Uh, at the beginning of semester, you took the pond water, you brought it over, we looked at it, we saw some rotifera, I said, ah, this is rotifera. You thought it was a protozoan. I said, protozoan never get that big. Those are, they were huge on the microscope. You can go to the pond water right now and bring some rotifera if you want. But anyhow, uh, freshwater animals, uh, they have crona. Crona is a ciliated structure. Usually they have two of them. Some species that we have, it's one of them, and they're like a propeller. They beat, they have cilia, and they beat. When they beat, they can propel the animal forward. And also, uh, the food, water goes in with the food, so uh, they, uh, it's for both for um, digestion, absorption, uh, bringing food, and also for a movement. Uh, some sessile and some are colonial, some epizoic, it means they live on the surface of other animals, usually they do not harm them. That's what epizoic means, they do not harm, and they are not ectoparasite. That's what they say with their epizoic. They're not ectoparasite, you're familiar with that term. And um, uh, they do want to go in cisment, and I will talk about it. I'll show you a diagram to go over in cisment. <clears throat> Body has head, trunk, and tail, foot. A rotifers move like leech, or by corona, or both. Internal structures, they have cuticle. Uh, I say internal structures, and the first thing I mention is <laughs> external structure, cuticle. <laughs> cuticle is an external structure. Uh, they have syncytial epidermis, just like their cousins, uh, not their cousins, but like nematodes. Um, uh, Sub-epidermis, they have muscles, uh, locomotion of uh, uh, pseudocele, uh, they are pseudocelomate animals. Before I go anywhere else, you should know these are another pseudocelomate animals. I mentioned that earlier, but for the second time. Uh, mastex uh, or, or pharynx have muscles, uh, salivary and gastric glands, uh, proteinephridia tubules, uh, I promised Patrick we will talk about proteinephridia and all that uh, later on. I will talk about it, but uh, cloaca, they have cloaca. Uh, as you know, it's a place that both, an orifice that both uh, waste uh, and reproductive material comes out. Uh, by low brain, by means what is in your quiz today? Two. two. By means two. Uh, and also reproduction, they are dioecious. One testes. Um.